Hello everyone. North Korea says it's cut a military hotline with the South and it's also saying it will tell the UN Security Council the threat of nuclear war in the region is now growing. North Korean state TV has been showing the leader Kim Jong-un watching military exercises. South Korea and the US have also been conducting their own war games in the region. Upon authorization of the foreign ministry, the DPRK openly informs the UN Security Council that the Korean Peninsula now has the conditions for a simmering nuclear war. This is because of provocation moves by the US and South Korean puppets. Uh, Harry Fawcett live now from Seoul in South Korea for us. Talk us through this one, Harry, because it's, it's interesting. The wording is kind of strange and also the fact that they're going to inform, as the newsreader just there, openly inform the UN Security Council. It is strange. It's a mixture of things. It's both uh, it could be seen as provocative. It could also be seen as an appeal for some kind of international negotiation informing the UN, perhaps seeking some kind of way out of, of the escalating military uh, situation that North Korea has, has largely got itself into with, with the rhetoric that's been coming out. But some of that rhetoric is extremely uncompromising uh, even by recent standards uh, they seem to have dispensed with the the sort of get out clauses they've had of saying that if uh, a conflict were to spring up then B we would do this they're talking about uh, a practical showing of uh, taking practical military countermeasures because of the mm -hmm. of the confrontational uh, posture that they say South Korea and the United States has already been displaying uh, and they've they said that in the foreign ministry statement they made a similar comment in the statement announcing the cutting off of this military hotline. Yeah, what is the story on that sort of thing? What, I mean, you think of the two Koreas always, as we say, technically still being at war, yet they have a military hotline. Can you explain that more for us? Well, certainly, I mean, there were up to eight military hotlines at one stage. Uh, two of them in the east were disabled by a, a forest fire. Uh, two of them over the West Sea, uh, where a lot of the, the confrontations have been had at sea. Uh, they were cut off unilaterally by North Korea in 2006. But four of them in the western sector of the DMZ, the demilitarized zone between South Korea and North Korea, remain open. They have been cut off before in 2009. They've now been cut off again by North Korea. Uh, a statement at 11.20 a.m., according to KCNA, uh, transmitted to the South Koreans by North Korea saying that they were taking this measure. Uh, what's interesting is that this, this line is used to uh, coordinate travel from south to the north uh, for, for staff of the joint industrial complex at Kaesong, uh, which is stationed within North Korea but is run really by South Korean companies. It earns North Korea 50 to 60 million dollars a year in wages. There's some uh, positive sign at the moment in that, uh, that companies that, that have operations there, the unification ministry here in South Korea is saying that the line to that plant, uh, to that group of plants remains open and that entrances and exits have been carrying on as normal. In 2009, uh, some 90 workers were stranded there overnight while they tried to work out how they would uh, go about processing people in and out without this military hotline in operation. There is also a civilian air aviation hotline, which we understand is still open. But at the same time, this hotline is very important because it's, it connects these two militaries that are stationed just four kilometers away from each other. It allows them to communicate and play down or, or, or tamp down anything uh, that might go wrong accidentally. And there was, interestingly, an example potentially of that early uh, this morning, Wednesday morning, when a South Korean soldier in the small hours threw a grenade at a suspicious object mm. in the demilitarized zone. Uh, South Korea briefly on its highest alert for a North Korean provocation as a result. They investigated, found that there was nothing suspicious there. But uh, presumably that's the kind of thing that this hotline is there to prevent escalating. And now that it's no longer in use, apparently, that is a worrying development. Harry Fawcett, live from Seoul for us. Thank you, Harry. Also, we're looking at military tensions on the rise elsewhere in Asia. The Chinese Navy has been undertaking maneuvers off the eastern coast of Malaysia. The ships, similar to these ones, are considered to be some of China's most sophisticated. An unusual move, although Beijing claims territory in that area.